<laughs> Dumb decks. Hey, what's up, nerds? Hardleg Joe here, welcoming you once again to Dumb Decks, the show where I look at Yu-Gi-Oh builds that are unique and interesting, but not necessarily good or fun to play. This time, we're looking at Hope for Exodia. Now, perhaps calling this a unique deck is a little too forward. This is not a new deck by any means. Uh, I first became aware of this back in 2012, when an amazing man by the name of Jarrell Winston got to top 8 at Worlds with this thing, completely befuddling the entirely Insector meta at the time. His version of the deck famously played One Day of Peace at 3, and I'm pretty sure it had something to do with why this card got banned. Since then, a lot of people have made different variants of this deck, using whatever new draw power and stall cards come out. None of those later versions have achieved the heights of meta relevance like the original did, but that hasn't stopped people from continuing to try. It seems like every year a new version of Hope for Exodia does its rounds through the casual scene, and I figured 2019 would be my turn to give it a shot. So if you're unfamiliar with this deck, its main goal is to draw cards. Draw as many cards as possible, as fast as possible. And nothing draws more cards than the deck's namesake, Hope for Escape. This is a normal trap card that says if your opponent's life points are at least a thousand higher than yours, pay a thousand life points, then draw one card for each two thousand point difference between you and your opponent. Basically, the bigger the difference between you and your opponent's life points, the more cards you draw. Using stuff like Gift Card and Upstart Goblin, you can give your opponent a ton of life points, then just let them attack you until your life points are low. Once you get down to around 2,000 or so, then you have a bunch of cards like Battle Fader, Swift Scarecrow, and Wabaku that can jump in and keep you from dying. If everything goes optimally, if you've activated all your gift cards and you have less than 2,000 life points, Hope for Escape will draw you 8 cards. This won't get you through Exodia on its own, of course, but it will go through about a fourth of your deck and get you enough hand advantage that you can safely set 5 pass every turn. From there, you should be able to resolve accumulated fortune alongside a bunch of draw one cards pretty much every turn, refilling your hands and keeping you safe for the remaining turns that you need to get through the rest of your deck. As for my contributions to the build, I threw in Pot of Extravagance since the extra deck is pretty much useless, alongside Trap Trick, which is amazing for this deck. Not only will this thing dig through your deck, it searches pretty much all your key cards, including a hope for escape which means instead of waiting for it, you can often search it out at the right time for maximum draw power. It's also chainable at just about any time, which means it works well alongside your other traps to go into accumulated fortune. The side deck also has some new additions. Lilith can of course search out all your traps and dodge removal that things like card car might not be able to. And all the solemn cards allow you to actually disrupt your opponent while lowering your life points in the process. Both of these could easily work in the main deck, but I find it much more effective to side them in game two. Your opponent will often side out all their monster negate, since this is a pretty spell trap heavy deck, allowing Lilith to go off uncontested. And if they think you're playing solitaire, suddenly throwing in a bunch of counter traps that can disrupt them has the potential to completely shut them down when they're not expecting it. As for why I consider this a dumb deck, just, just look at it. It's, it's draw Exodia. It's, uh, it's one step away from fucking chain burn. There's no real interaction with your opponent, no real strategy to playing it, and whether or not you win is often just up to the luck of the draw. If I played this on what a deck, I'd run out of stuff to say after the first duel, and if you played this in real life, you'd probably get bored of it pretty quickly. But anyway, now that I've talked about how it works, l let's show off this thing in action. As you can see here, we're playing some kind of Clifford Metal Foes hybrid, which is admittedly nowhere near the meta, or even Rogue for that matter. But if you watch carefully, you'll see that they do manage to put Cyber Dragon Infinity on board. So they do have some negation to stop us. Uh, they don't know when to activate that negation, of course, because who expects Exodia in this day and age? So they let the extravagance go through, not realizing that drawing is our one and only win condition. 
We set our traps and pass, and the only mildly tricky thing we do, the only little bit of strategy, is that we activate Battle Fader first, even though we want to take the damage. Because most people will want to negate that, they'll want to be able to attack that turn, and of course he falls right for the bait. With his one negation used, we draw, we activate Gift Card, we use Trap Trick to get Hope for Escape. It's not optimal, but it does get us four cards, which is good enough. He knows with all those cards we're going to do something big next turn, so he fuses into the battle phase, tries to go in for the kill right here, but Swift Scarecrow says no. And from here on in, the game is pretty much over. I mean, at this point, our plays take no thought, we're just setting four or five cards every turn, and honestly, even if he had kept his Cyber Dragon Infinity, he couldn't possibly negate all of what we have. We're going plus one every turn, thanks to accumulated fortune, Keep drawing, keep stalling, drawing and stalling, until eventually we just activate the card that draws us our last piece of Exodia. So yeah, overall, it's a neat little relic from the past, but I doubt it will see anything more competitive than a Locals anytime soon. And even its casual fun wears out pretty fast. Still, a modern quick draw Exodia deck can be a neat thing to break out from time to time, it's always fun to activate Hope for Escape on someone who's never seen it before and draw 7-8 cards in one time. Aside from that though, nothing too special. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed hearing about this dumb little deck. Give the video a like if you want to see more dumb decks, subscribe for more goofy Yu-Gi-Oh content in general, and if you have ideas for your own dumb decks, leave them down in the comments below. Until next time, good luck! And have fun. <laughs>